Hello, my name is Tina Muzamin, and today I'm going to give a brief introduction to what verbal memory is and how it is processed in the brain and how you can improve it. Well, verbal memory can be defined as the memory of either spoken or written language. It includes abstractions of language such as symbols, numbers, sounds, or signs. When you are reading a book, you encode memories of written language. When you're listening to a professor or having a conversation with someone, it is memories of spoken language. Verbal memory can be divided into two separate processes. First, there is encoding. Encoding is how the information is stored in the brain for the first time. Previous knowledge is important for encoding as it provides meaning. Uh, Pre-existing knowledge uh, helps encoding by supplying a relevant context. Secondly, recall refers to remembering the encoded information. This can be either at will or in response to a situation. When recalling memories, cues and other factors that trigger the retrieval of the stored information are important. An example of a daily use of verbal memory is when you go shopping and you have to remember the items on your grocery list. Imagine you're going to grocery shopping, you have planned all the items you want to buy and written a grocery list. But when you arrive at the store, you notice you have forgotten the actual list at home. Now you have to try to remember the items on your grocery list. The encoding part happened when you were deciding on the items of the list, when writing them down and reading them uh, from the list, and perhaps consulting with others if the list was complete. Recall is when you remember the items on the list without having it in front of you. When people remember items from the list, they often recall the first items and the last items on the list the best. The items in the middle are more often forgotten. Remembering the first items is referred to as primacy effect, while remembering the last items on the list is called the recency effect. The uh, primacy effect is likely due to a greater attention and less items to compete for storage at the beginning. The recency effect happens because it is easier to remember the last words you heard before recall. In theory, a person can recall the list exactly as it was spoken or written down, as exemplified here. This is not how a typical brain works, though. Uh, the brain automatically rearranges the words on the list to improve recall reorganization into semantic groups as an effective way of enhancing memory. In the brain, the items on the list are reorganized to improve encoding and recall. Items uh, that share characteristics like semantic meaning are organized together. Exemplified here by lumping together the items that can be considered baked goods, dairy products, and vegetables, for example. Here, all the items are organized into category groups based on semantic categories, as here. In real life, different people would organize the list differently based on their experiences or their preferences. For example, pizza could be part of dinner category instead of baked goods. A person could also have a totally unique organization of, of the least, which makes sense only to that person. This is referred to as subjective categories. Some words that are different from the rest of the items or have a special meaning, for example, by having a positive or negative emotional connotation are often easier to remember. Balloons could be associated with the festivities and could be such a word. Primacy and recency effects are also often present in recall, even after reorganization of the items. There are several neuropsychological tests developed to evaluate verbal memory functions. Verbal list learning and memory tests, which are similar to grocery list example, are frequently used in the clinic. The lists include uh, between 10 to 16 words, which are repeated 1 to 5 times for learning. The test taker has to recall as many words as possible immediately and also after a 15 to 20 minute delay. 
paired associated test is another word test where unrelated pairs of words are presented and the test taker is instructed to remember the words which were presented together. In the story memory test, a short story is presented to the test taker. The test taker has to recall the story in detail. So there are several factors that can affect your memory. Memory is not an isolated cognitive ability, but depends on how much attention you are uh, deploying to the task, how fast you can process the information, uh, or your ability to reorganize and categorize the items, for example. The context or setting you are in will also influence memory. Strong emotions can enhance encoding, for example, in a car crash, while a stressful setting such as, uh, such as an exam can make it more difficult to recall memories. There are numerous factors shown to impact encoding and recall. Here are some. Different disease and disorders of the brain commonly affect memory functions. Schematically, we can say that encoding and recall processes take place in different brain regions. Since the left hemisphere of the brain is dominant for understanding the language, verbal encoding is considered left lateralized that is taking place in the left hemisphere. On the other hand, recall involves both hemispheres of the brain. An interesting example of how verbal processing and hence memory can be affected by brain injury is presented by people with split brain. The two hemispheres of the brain are connected uh, anatomically by a large bundle of fibers called the corpus callosum. These fibers allow the two hemispheres to communicate by sending signals between them. Uh, in some people, a medical procedure is performed in which the corpus callosum fibers are transected. This means that the two hemispheres no longer communicate through this main fiber bundle. Reasons for such surgery could, for example, be epilepsy and as an epileptic attack uh, then would become less likely to spread to each of the hemispheres. This procedure has unique consequences on verbal ability and memory. For a patient uh, with a severe corpus callosum or split brain, the hemispheres process information independently of each other as if they were separate individuals. The less left hemisphere controls the right side of the body and vice versa. As language processed, is processed mainly in the left side of the brain, split brain patients can only process words presented on the right side of the screen. Here is an example of how a split brain patient performs a verbal test involving two words presented on either side of the uh, screen. Some words are going to be presented on the screen, either on the right side or the left side, uh, and it's going to be every second. So just tell me what you see. Okay. Phone. Piano. Oh, I didn't see that one. Uh, can you do it? Uh, yeah, I can try. Oh, as a box, of course. Yeah. Since the right hemisphere cannot process words, we observe an interesting breakdown in verbal comprehension and expression. The right hemisphere needs to communicate what it is uh, seen to the left hemisphere in a non-verbal manner. For example, by drawing the words, only then can the two hemispheres combine the information and the individual with a split brain fully understand the task presented. Now you will see two words. Let me know what they are. Sure. Well, I can definitely see stool on the right. I think, can I try drawing the one on the left? Yes, sure. I think that's a toad. Yeah. Oh, of course, it's toadstool. Yes. There exist several methods aimed at improving encoding and recalling information. 
One method focuses on organizing the information into smaller units. For example, when remembering a phone number, you can organize the numbers into smaller clusters, like the first three digits, the middle two digits, and the last three digits. The numbers are then remembered together as a cluster or a larger number. Remembering three clusters is easier than remembering eight separate digits. Another method of improving verbal memory is to use um, association, for example, by visualizing the words you hear or read. Method of um, Loki, also known as the memory palace, is, is an ancient technique building on uh, this principle. Here you associate each item or piece of information with an object or a scene in rooms or along a path in a familiar location, for example, the rooms of your house or your way to work. The idea behind this method is to take a visual journey in your mind to recall the information. Both visualization and method of Loki relies on visuospatial abilities. An alternative strategy is to make a story of the items to be remembered. Use of mnemonics is another method for verbal memory. Examples of useful mnemonics are acronyms or rhymes. The RICE acronym is used uh, in sports as a way of remembering the important actions after getting an injury in order to alleviate the further damage and pain. RICE is an abbreviation for restitution, ice, compression, and elevation. It is easier to remember acronyms such as RICE as it is much shorter and involves cues to the actual words just by using the first letter of each of them. Finally, we want to say thank you to everyone who has contributed to this presentation. And here is the references used for this presentation.